Hi, in this video we're going to look at creating sprites. So as I said, sprites are uh, costumes for objects, so they're the way that objects look. Um, so I'm not actually going to show you um, how to draw sprites. What I'm going to do is take you through how to create a sprite and how to use some of the tools that are available in order for you to create your own sprites. So the first thing we need to do is to look in at the asset browser. Um, we need to right click on um, the sprites option. So I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to create and I'm going to create a sprite. You can see that this window has opened up um, and it's asking me to name my sprite. Now it's really important in GameMaker that you use naming conventions and that means there's certain rules that you have to apply when you name things. So sprites always have SPR in front of any name you give, SPR underscore actually. So um, I'm going to name this SPR underscore, okay, and then you can give your sprite a name. I'm just going to call my sprite test because um, I'm using this to demonstrate um, different tools uh, in the sprite creator. So I'm going to call this test. You will probably call yours something like character or player or explorer or whatever it is you want to call it, but it needs, needs to be a sensible name, okay? And I'm going to press enter. Now the sprite has been created with a size of 64 pixels by 64 pixels, which is perfect for us. If you did want to resize, then you could click on those uh, the, the, um, the arrows there and you could resize the, uh, the image here by resizing the canvas or scaling it, okay? So there are two options open to you, but I'm happy to leave it as it is. We also want to change um, the rotation point of our sprite. Uh, currently, you can see, uh, looking at the top left-hand corner, we've got a little crosshairs at the top. Um, that means that when the uh, sprite is rotated, it will rotate around that point. Well, we don't want that. What we want is a rotation around the center. So uh, you're gonna click on this uh, drop-down arrow here, okay? And you're gonna select middle center, and you can see that it puts the, um, the selection uh, point at least the rotation point in the center of the sprite. So now we're going to edit the image. Okay, so there are a couple of things here that I want to point out to you. The first of those is the, um, is the tools area here. So whatever tool you have selected will allow you to select um, different uh, t um, properties here. This is an animation window which we'll come and look at later. Um, this is the um, zoom area and allows you to put a grid on. So if I toggle the grid, it allows me to put a grid onto the sprite so I can, uh, I can work it where the center of the, of the sprite image will be and so on. I'll turn that off for now. We've got a brushes area, which allows us to select the type of brush that we want, whether that be a square brush or a circle brush. Uh, we have a color palette. Um, you can select your own colors here as well. We have um, the primary and secondary colors that are selected. So currently the primary color is selected as white, which is allocated to the left mouse button. And the secondary color is black, which is allocated to the black mouse button. And then we've got the toolbox. So um, I'm gonna use the toolbox to demonstrate um, some of the tools that you can use. So currently this is the paintbrush tool. Uh, if I left click and drag, okay, I draw with my, uh, my white. If I right click and drag, it draws with my black. Similarly, if I change the brush size, so let's say I change the brush there, and I click and drag, okay, and click and drag there, you can see that it, draw, it draws um, a thicker line using my primary and secondary colors, depending on whether I've selected the left and right mouse button. Right mouse button. So I'm just gonna undo that, so that's Control and Z. I can select a different color. So if I wanna assign, say, um, a yellow to my secondary button, then I just right click it. And if I want to select, uh, I don't know, maybe um, this color here, um, that, that color to my primary button, I left click it. And now I've changed my colors, okay? Okay, the second tool I wanna to show you very quickly is the eraser tool, not much to see here. It's simply that, it, it rubs things out, okay? So I can just use the eraser tool and I can select a different size brush to rub out as well. Um, the next is the paint fill or the fill tool. So again, if I click the fill tool and I select, I've got my uh, my yellow selected as my secondary. If I right click the background, it shades it as uh, yellow. If I left click, I've got that bluey color, okay? 
Um, similarly, if I draw a shape, I can fill a shape, and I'll show you that in a second. These two tools allow you to remove colors. Um, so, for example, if I had um, uh, a fill color there and I wanted to remove that color, okay, then I use that. Um, I could uh, use that tool to um, to replace all instances of that color in a um, in a in a sprite. Uh, we have the line tool. Um, so the line tool allows us to draw a straight line, different to the paintbrush tool because the paintbrush tool is free uh, flowing, which means that if we, um, we we can't, it's very difficult to draw a straight line. Whereas the line tool allows us to draw straight lines. Okay, we've got um, the rectangle tool. There's two options here. There's uh, an outline and a filled rectangle. So if I go for the outline tool first, that allows me to draw uh, a rectangle. And if I hold down the shift key, it allows me to draw a square. Okay, okay, so a perfect square or a rectangle. Okay, so I can draw that. Similarly, if I do the filled square, uh, I, I, it fills the square for me. If I click the both button at the top, Okay, let's just get rid of this Let's undo and that. And then I, you can see it's selected both sides of this icon and now it does this, the, uh, the, the, the outline and the fill. So the outline will be the primary color, the fill is the secondary. Okay, so that's that tool. Uh, same thing for the circle tool. So um, if I draw that, it allows me to draw an ellipse. If I hold down shift, okay, it allows me to draw a, a perfect circle. Same thing, I can use the outline of both fills as well. Uh, the next one is the polygon tool. So if I click uh, in my first point, my second point, my third point, so I can draw a triangle. If I draw another point, okay, it allows me to select uh, some really strange shapes, okay? But then the important thing is if, uh, when I click off it, okay, it asks me to confirm it. So if I go onto um, another tool, okay, um, it asks me to uh, to confirm whether or not I want to uh, commit to those to that change. Um, if I draw an arc, okay, you can see that I draw an arc, and again, um, if I click off, it asks me to commit to the tool changes. Uh, without that, I can't move forward. Okay, so it's important that uh, that you do that. Um, let's undo those. The text tool, uh, text tool is fine. It's not brilliant because you have to make sure that you select the font you want to use first and you don't really get a uh, a preview of the fonts so let's say if I go to papyrus down here and I click here okay and I start typing all right you can see that the, it's not it's not brilliant um, I can use my resize tool here to resize the font um, and I can change the, the style if there's one available to bold and whatever there's not in this instance uh, it's only a regular uh, uh, font that's available. So that's using the font tool. Um, so let's get rid of that. Let's use the selection tool. Oh, I've, again, you've got to commit to the tool changes. Um, let's get rid of those. Okay. Then we've got the color picker tool. So let me just draw a few shapes a second. So let me just uh, um, let's just select that color. Let's do the pen. Matter of fact, let's do a square. There, 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 there. Okay. So if I use the color picker tool, that allows me to pick a color. So it sucks the color up into the brush. If you look at the uh, the bluey color I've got here, okay, that one there. If I use the color picker tool and left click here, oh, let's use this one because that's already on the right. Let's let's choose the yellow. You can see that it changes my color to the yellow, and then I can use that color. Okay, so anywhere on a sprite, I can use the color picker tool to allow me to pick a color and to um, to um, use that color. This next tool is the marquee tool. It lets me to select an object and move it about. Okay, I can select multiple objects. I can hold down the control key. It allows me to select another one and I can move them about. Okay, so I can do that. This next one's a bit weird. It allows me to uh, to select bits of images. So if I go onto here and I draw, I don't know, that, that. why you'd want to use this, I don't really know. Um, but I can move that bits of the, those bits of images then off. Okay, so that's a bit strange, that one. I have the magic wand tool. So say, for example, I draw a, um, oh, sorry. 
let's try and uh, draw a circle inside there hang on sorry right, let's, get, let's get that right let's use the circle tool draw a circle inside there okay so if I use the magic wand tool it allows me to select either the circle or the square and I can drag that out okay so that's the magic wand tool and these last tools here I'm not going to go into those those are um, just um, allow you to flip images so um, I could uh, I can use those tools to flip bits and uh, images um, or brushes actually um, but I'm not going to use those so we're not going to look at those so those are in a nutshell those are the tools if I wanted to select my own color if I double click any color um, I can choose um, my custom color um, so let's see I wanted to go there and click OK that's then my custom color so you can see it's put it into my color box there um, so I can create custom colors okay so let's have a quick very very quick look at animation control A selects all I press delete to get rid of it okay so there's two ways in which I can animate so this is my animation at the top my animation bar and these are my frames so let's say I start with a, um, a square. So let's draw a, a filled square. Um, let's draw it with a yellow, and I'm going to draw a filled square there. Okay. If I right click here and copy, and then paste that frame in, okay, you can see I've got two frames the same. So on this one, I'm going to move my square. So I'm going to use my, uh, my tool there, and I'm going to move my square down. I'm going to draw one more frame. I'm going to copy this one, I'm going to paste it in. Okay, wherever's underlined, that's the frame you're working on. So I want to make sure I'm working on this last one. And I'm going to click uh, down to the bottom here. Okay, and now I've got three frames one, two, three. So if I run the animation by clicking the play button, it does that. Okay, so I've got an animation, it's very, very fast. So what, if I click on this little icon here at the side, that allows me to change my speed of my animation. There's two options. Frames per game, don't want that. Okay, that's um, that that will animate to the same uh, speed as your game speed, and you don't want that because we're going to be uh, our game's going to be 60 frames a second. We want to use frames per second. So as I start reducing the um, the speed here, you can see that the animation is starting to slow down and it becomes more usable. Okay, so there is that way to animate. Um, there's also a very clever way of doing animation. Um, which uh, is a, a quick way of animating. So I'm going to stop this animation. I want to point out one uh, some some of the tools here. So this um, is currently set to loop. So it will loop over and over again. So as it gets to the end of that frame, it'll go back to the start. If I click this button here, it it toggles ping pong. What that does, that loops to the end and then back. So that's ideal for things like bouncing balls and things like that because it'll bounce down and bounce back up. Um, and then we can just do it so as it's uh, off, so it just plays once, okay, and then stops. Click that button again and play, and we, we toggle back to uh, to animation, okay. So I just wanted to show you those. So one more thing before um, I, I can I can highlight multiple frames by clicking the first one. You hold the control key and then select it. You can see how many are selected there. And I can delete those frames, okay. So I'm going to show you. Um, a, uh, a quick way of animating so I'm going to use um, a different color let's see I use that color now I'm going to draw a filled circle okay there we go and I'm going to copy that frame by control and C um, sorry copy it paste it in 12 times there we go so I got 12 frames exactly the same okay so you can see that it's uh, it's running now I'm going to speed the animation up a little bit Let's say I go up to 12 frames a second, so that's playing um, those 12 frames every second. So, if I use the eraser tool just to just to demonstrate, okay, and I just I can change my brush size. Let's say I change it to that one there, and that one there, and I just start rubbing out bits of my shape. You can see that it's starting to animate. my shape I can do the same thing by I don't know if I wanted to put a little filled square or something as a yellow um, and I'm gonna make the thing smaller there we go okay okay 
okay so you can see you get the idea so I can animate uh, like that so it's, what it's actually doing is creating uh, the animation on the fly if you like so there's that way of animating I'm going to stop that I'm going to select um, some frames so I do if I click on the last frame come down to the, this frame the, the second frame hold shift to press enter that selects all of the frames up to the, well excluding the first one and just press delete and I'm going to get rid of that and then I'm going to select all and delete right so now I'm going to draw a very simple um, character very very simple I'm not going to I'm no artist so um, it's not going to be the, the best you've seen okay so I'm just going to make sure that I've got my two default color palettes back okay I'm going to make sure I've got a, a sensible size brush so let's have a look at this character then so I'm going to use the um, unfilled ellipse tool and I'm going to draw a head I'm going to use the unfilled ellipse tool I'm going to draw a body okay not the best but uh, you can see I'm going to put the grid on to help me a little bit so let's use my um, marquee tool to select Uh, my top shape here and move it across slightly so it's just centered same thing here move my mark use my marquee tool here to move that up there we go okay um, let's have a look I'm going to use the line tool now I'm going to draw a line down here would it help if I stop the marquee tool first so let's undo that Okay, let's stop the marquee. Okay, I'm going to use my line tool to draw a line down there, a line down there, and now I'm going to use the brush tool to draw my boots a little bit like that. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to give my character some eyes. So I'm going to use my um, pick a color. I'm just going to pick that color. If I uh, do the same thing there, I can use copy and paste um, if I wanted to. Uh, let's go back to um, my color there and let's draw a nose not the best nose in the world is it like I say I'm no artist so let's try and move that nose a little bit I think that's just unfortunately in between those two pixels so it's going to, have to stay like that and then lastly I'm going to use the uh, rectangle tool let's get rid of the uh, selection tool the rectangle tool with a red and I'm going to draw mouth okay so I'm going to draw some buttons on the clothes here so let's use a white a white circle there we go and again I'm going to use the tool here to copy and I'm going to paste there we go there's my three buttons so let's apply some fill colors to this now then so let's say he's going to have a a greeny colored jumper so I'm gonna fill my character with a green jumper let's give him a face color there we go nice and then we're gonna have some um, some brown knee boots okay so I could give my character some arms as well but uh, you get the idea so um, when we're talking of animation, I could do uh, something like this. So let's let's copy that and let's paste it in. Okay, and let's say that um, on this second frame, he's closing his mouth. So let's uh, use the color picker tool to make sure we've got the right color. So the color picker tool there. Let's pick that color, and then we're going to fill inside the mouth like that on the middle frame. And now if I animate, okay, you can see what's happening there. It might be as well that on the first frame we fill white. 
and on the last frame we fill white to make it stand out and now okay so you can see now that that's uh, a simple animation so when you're happy with your when you're with your character okay let's pause that um, the character is saved automatically to your sprite you're just going to click on this uh, this cross here by here just to close that down and you can see there now that there's my sprite that's going to be used in game okay legs are a bit long I know but there we are um, now throughout the rest of these tutorial videos I am going to be supplying some of the sprites that you can use um, in your program however um, it's really important that you generate your own sprites so um, I am going to be asking you to draw your own uh, main character using the sprite tool in uh, game maker um, because you have to make sure that you can use you can create your own assets so you need to make sure you draw the, the, the main character at least and you're more than welcome to draw the others as well or you can use some of the ones that I'm going to provide um, so uh, that's how we create um, sprites in game maker um, we're going to use those sprites as uh, costumes for the objects that we're going to look at in the next lesson okay so um, have a play a bit with that see how you go um, thanks for watching